Hey everyone, Ryan and Tom here. This week at Secure It, we're talking about military storage. We got a lot of questions and comments about our military heritage, so we thought that we would walk you through kind of our roots. Yeah, uh, you know, military is what made Secure. We got involved in weapon storage in 2002, and uh, as of last year, you know, sales data we look at, we're the largest supplier to the U.S. military for small arms, weapon racks, and armory design. We're also building a lot of storage systems, weapon storage systems now. We're in Central and South America. We're in the Middle East. We're doing some work in India. Um, we've done work in Nigeria and Ghana. So it's, it's a big part of the company. You know, but my primary focus is the retail, the consumer side. I believe that's where, you know, that's where we can make the biggest change, biggest impact. If you've followed me, if you follow Secure It and uh, what we do, you know that we don't like the consumer storage industry. We think it's failed. We think that they're doing a poor job in misrepresenting what they do. So we've got a couple of our military cabinets set up out in the warehouse, and we're gonna go out and just kind of walk you through our, you know, what our mindset is, how we go about designing and building military storage, and then how that pertains to the retail market. All right, so we're out here in the warehouse, and we've got some military product right behind us. Now, you all might know that we have military roots, and we started there, but Tom, how did it all start? Um, in 2002, I had a business called Greenline Data that was primarily selling laptop storage, computer storage products, tape racks. We were the largest seller of computer tape storage racks in the country. And HIPAA rules came out for locking up laptops in hospitals, so we started selling a lot of cabinets for PC and laptop storage. A guy called me and said, can you store an MP5? Now, at the time, I'm thinking computers, I'm an MP5, I'm thinking, is that a Dell, is that a... Mac, I said, now what is that? And he goes, well, it's a little machine gun. And it took me about three seconds to just go, oh yeah, we can store that. And that's really how it started, mm -hmm. is it was a phone call, guys from the FBI, I'd never looked at actually thinking, you know, storing, you know, I'd shoot guns, I'd store guns in my house, never thought about it. That was the start. And we started doing research on it, and the more that we looked into it, the more we realized there were a lot of problems in the industry. Um, and there were a lot of the talking points within the military was about armories and armories failing inspections. Um, it got bad. U.S. Army Special Forces put out a request for a, for a proposal, a bid, for an arms room assessment program. And we didn't know much about arms rooms. We were, at the time, we didn't know anything about them, but we knew a lot about storage and different types of storage. And we actually put a proposal in, and we won the contract. And we kind of went into this thing, you know, holy cow, did we just like way bite off more than we could chew. Mm. And we started, it was a two year program. We flew around to every special forces armory in the country, spent time with the armors, looked at the workflow, really watched what they were doing and looking at all the problems they're having. And that gave us our education. I mean, we came in, we were supposed to be the pros coming in to solve their problems. By the time that contract was over, we were the pros just because we learned so much, which gets us to cradle grid. Let's open these up. Now, in the military, their biggest problem was they had weapon storage systems, either one rack for one gun, meaning they had an M2 rack for just M2s, a Mark 19 rack, or they had a cabinet with a different bracket for every gun. So you'd end up with 60 different components, and the minute things start changing, the systems would fail. So we came down to two pieces, one upper saddle and then the lower stock base. Now, it's got a bungee on it. We do supply these with bungees. It's really for mobile applications or we make high density mobile systems where the racks move on aisles within a storage facility. For basic storage, for home storage, you don't need to use a bungee. The gun lean in there really well. Let me put these down. Now, the upper cradle is great though because when you have 60 different pieces, say one of them breaks, now you've got to find a replacement. Right. The military typically does not buy replacement parts. They adapt and overcome. They make do with what they have. And over the course through you know, seven, eight years of changing and not using, not being able to resupply, because it's hard for them to get money approved to buy anything, mm -hmm. the systems get worse and worse till they're completely failing. We can talk a little bit about this. I've got this set up right now. This is a, what we would call a crew serve type configuration. I've got M4s on top, an assortment of crew serve weapons. And it shows the flexibility that the system using just the one piece stores just about any gun in a military army, up to shoulder launch systems, Carl Gustafs, um, I can do mortar cannons. We're selling more and more of these in the, in the retail market. More and more consumers are buying Model 84 cabinets. 
and if you've been following us for a while, you know that we had a major price drop on this product. Our military business has grown so much, we were able to hard tool a lot of the manufacturing of the cabinet, which got our cost down tremendously. So I believe right now, what's our price on these cabinets? We're about 1600 Yeah, it's, they were $2,500 a year ago. I want to explain what you're getting with this when you're buying it. This is a cabinet designed and built for military standards. It goes into military armories. Now people, you know, consumers like them because there's so much flexibility for gear and guns. But I want people to understand it's not a safe. It is a gun cabinet. Now we're using a, it's a cam driven multi-pin locking system. So when you actuate the hasp, padlock goes on that. You've got rods going top and bottom. They're hardened steel. And then we've got metal welded and metal rods welded into the top and bottom to reinforce on the pins. But again, I just want to, it's not a safe. These are gun caps. They're all 14 gauge steel. Um, weigh about 265, 270 pounds. Mm -hmm. We were in the military, we started in 2002, didn't really get into it in 2004. And then 2007 is when we actually got the patent approved for the cradle grid system. And then as of last year, we are now the largest supplier of the military to the military. It's a pretty, um, it's a big growth curve. And if you looked at me, our competitors in the marketplace they're all but gone now, and they just never were able to adapt. Um, they just kind of stuck with their old way of doing things. But which gets us to the consumer, the retail market. Now, we're doing a lot of trade shows with our product. Our biggest customers were U.S. Army Special Forces and Navy SEALs. We're doing trade shows, and the operators are coming to us saying, I want this for my house. And they're like, well, sure, we'll work you a deal. And they're buying it for their house. And really got us thinking, we need to address this. And I'm sitting here looking at my own safe and it just came on like a light switch there's nothing about my gun safe that's designed to hold a gun and we've demonstrated it here the stupid little w's all the carpeting all the drywall and at that time i didn't even realize how bad it was i was just looking at the little w's going you know what this is really stupid so we took we actually cannibalized systems i actually built my safe using cradle grid, and it was a hack job, but I just wanted to just kind of experimenting with it. But as I pulled it apart, I started looking at the drywall and talking to people and various things over about a year period, really realized all of a sudden, it's not just the bad storage. Drywall's corrosive. Then I saw, once I started looking at corrosion and safes, holy cow, and then you got formaldehyde is corrosive. Pyrite, which is in Chinese drywall, turns into sulfuric and sulfurous acids, and you've got bacteria, which is much higher in Chinese safes than in U.S. safes, but it is in both. The bacteria is a ferrooxidin, which is used in mining to eat metal. It actually eats metal, strips metal out of ores in the mining industry, and it's all in a gun safe. And the more we looked at it, it's, it's almost the more shocking it became. It's, this industry is as bad as it gets and they're selling everybody on a bill of goods. And we decided um, a couple years ago, you know, our first product was a conversion kit for safes, our uh, Rapid 6, our Rapid 2s, and they're very, very popular. They're available in uh, Academy Sport. Academy. They're available in New Gander Outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, and they are very popular, and we started selling those. And then we realized we've got to be, there's, there's more to this. And over the next three or four months of just thinking about the industry, we realized We've got to drive change in this industry. We don't just want to, you know, build some gun storage cabinets, build safes. We want to change the industry. You know, and that's why we're reaching out to now our customers, and our customer base is growing every single day. And you guys are an enthusiastic bunch of people who get it, who want to do it right. We work hard to provide a solution so you can do it the right way, and you guys are responding. But we need help. You know, we don't, we don't want to just sell. Yes, we want to sell gun cabinets, but we want to change this industry. We want everybody to come clean and just say, you're right. We've been making crap. It's corrosive and it doesn't work. And we're gonna do a better job because at the end of the day, we have firearms for fun, for hunting, but mainly for defense. That's the second amendment, why we have it. Guns need to perform. Special Forces uses our cabinet because when they pull a gun out of my system, that scope is zeroed, the gun will perform perfectly. You need the same thing. You want the same thing. The industry won't give it to you. It's got to change. Well, that was quite a history lesson. Um, clearly, it's about proper and intelligent firearm storage. 
You know, it really is. At the end of the day, you want your firearms for very specific reasons. And when it's home defense, it's got to perform. It's got to perform perfectly. Um, we're going to keep going back to the concept of respect doesn't end when you close the door. This industry has failed, has failed every gun owner, and we want to change it. So that wraps us up for our military storage. Now, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to our email list. We've got a lot of cool stuff happening there. Yeah, and on uh, social media, we've got a lot of plans for third and fourth quarter. If you're posting images or articles or anything about us, make sure to tag us. Um, coming later this year, those tags will become more relevant. Lastly, if you got a question or concern, comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot. See you next week.